Welcome back to You Ask, We Answer at the Business Insider. So let's just get straight to the questions here. What do we have first? Gordon asks, do you believe in future dominance of America or do you think we are kaput? Well, I'd say it's about 50-50. No, I mean, really, I, I don't buy the kaput argument. Granted, we have insane amount of debt and we have political problems. But generally, the world seems to be getting more stable, not less so. Uh, free democratic countries have a pretty good track record and people have always th had some reason to believe America was about to go down the toilet or really any other country was. So if I were going to bet, I would bet on America's continued, uh, con I, I wouldn't say dominance exactly because uh, there are other countries coming up. I, I think that the emergence of other international powers and strong economies is actually probably good for us. So yeah, perhaps we won't dominate the globe like we used to, but I don't think we're kaput. So hopefully that makes you feel good. Next one comes from Shano, who asks, why is the government allowed to run and dominate coverage for flood insurance while there is a re resistance about a public option for health insurance? That's actually a really good question. There are a lot of kinds of insurance that the government does get into. Flood insurance is one. Hurricane insurance is another. Um, there probably wouldn't even be any such thing as coastal housing if we didn't have hurricane insurance because no private company would insure property that just gets destroyed every five years. I think the reason that uh, we accept this actually has something to do with our attitude towards housing. We have a very pro-housing policy in the government and we don't like to tell people that, no, you can't build here or you can't build by this river, you can't build by this coast because your house is going to get destroyed every few years and no one will back it up. So instead, we keep subsidizing it. I think it's a bad idea. I, I do think it should be privatized, uh, flood insurance. That way we would have less disasters every time. Um, we would have less, there would be less of a human toll every time a natural disaster struck. But as it is, we keep subsidizing people building in dangerous places. Seems like a bad idea to me. Next question comes from the pseudonymous Professor Funkenstein, who asks, are you a dog person? Which I think might be an inside joke. And my only answer is that I hate Tennessee. So if you get the question, then you get the response. All right, let's see what this is. Do you ever consider that this is an oversupply crisis and that there's just not enough demand for most of our assets, oil, gas, clothes, exotic resorts, etc. And what will be the new normal in terms of unemployment? No, I don't really believe that that's the case. I believe human demand is basically insatiable. If uh, people always want to go to resorts, people are always going to want to use energy. People are always going to want new clothes. So I don't really think that is the correct formulation of the crisis or the current um, the current situation. To me, it's more of a coordina coordination issue. Why can't we get everyone working what, sort of in some sort of harmonic manner so that everyone is doing something productive? Why is it that there are people who are skilled who are unemployed? I don't think the answer is oversupply of goods or an oversupply of labor. Um, I do, to some extent, believe that supply creates its own demand, as a lot of economists think. I think the problem is through, a bubble, through the bubble that we've just had, we've had a big misallocation of capital and talent, and that now we're trying to figure out what to do with all the assets we have. I hope that helps. But I, and, I, and to get to your question, I also think that explains why unemployment will remain high for some time. Um, uh, does the Blodge give out a lot of good stock tips around the office? Uh, I think he's pretty much out of that game, frankly. <laughs> what is your view of this of Boeing opting to build the 787 in South Carolina. Um, this was just announced yesterday. Boeing has had all kinds of problems building its 787, and now they're going to build it in South Carolina. The reason it's controversial is because South Carolina is a right-to-work state, and in the northern union states where they used to build stuff, uh, there were too many strikes and labor was too high. So that's frankly pretty understandable that they wouldn't want to keep building in expensive union states. I mean. They've already had uh, enough problems with their production facilities. Um, you know, plant shutdowns certainly don't help. That being said, there's another reason to wonder what the idea is in South Carolina, because besides the labor supply disruptions to um, Boeing's manufacturing facilities, they're also just not that well coordinated in terms of supply chain. Um, they've had problems with uh, surprise part shortages that have come up. 
things like that. Uh, and so by, fur by further spreading around the geography of their supply chain, I suspect they'll have more problems and that labor may diminish as a problem, but that other, uh, other logistics issues will emerge. Next question comes from Jeff Bardot, who asks what the real reason is for the public option. Do we really believe that it's competition, as uh, the Democrats are saying, or is there something more nefarious? I don't think, I do think they're, they're being, uh, the people who are pushing the public option are being a little bit disingenuous when they talk about competition. Um, I do think that's politicians speak to some extent. Um, there, are, I, there would be ways to create competition without a public option. I do really think, though, that for the most part, the people push, pushing the public option do believe that insurance, the greed of insurance companies is what's causing our health care problems in this country. I don't really think that's the issue. Um, I, I think as evidence is the fact that health insurance margins aren't even that high. But they actually do think that insurance companies are a major bottleneck in the health care system and that a government-run system could work better. Uh, so I'll give them credit for that. F last question of the day comes from frequent commenter Ghost of 29 who asks, is it fair to say that cluster stock editors are perma bears? So that's a fair question because we do have a lot of gloomy headlines like things, you know, stocks plunge and things tank and things go in the toilet, whatever it is, or bears get, or bulls get slaughtered. Um, so does that make us perma bears? I don't know. I don't think any of us really are bullish or bearish. I can tell you that generally speaking, and this is just straight up honesty, people prefer to read those stories than they prefer to read the durable goods order ticked up by 0.1% or something like that, something that'd be good news, no one cares. So if you think we're per perma bears, maybe you should look at yourself and ask, are you a perma bear and are you interested in good news? I mean, media has always been like this. It's always, it's, people complain about it forever that there's a focus on bad news. Don't ask us to try and change that tide. We're just giving you what you want to read.